In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make an add brick game that you can use to build a house or anything else. Here's one I made earlier. Click the Object Properties button, drag to make the Properties window wider, set the Y scale to 0.5 and the Z scale to 0.3. With the mouse pointer in the 3D view, press S to scale 0.99 and enter. Duplicate, hold down Shift, press D and enter, press M to move the duplicate to the last layer. Go into the last layer and name the duplicate Brick. Click the Material button, call the material Red. Click the Diffuse color, set the green to zero and the blue to zero. Duplicate the brick, Shift D and Enter, press M and move the duplicate to a different layer. Go into the new layer, change Blender Render to Blender Game, click the Add New Material button, call the new material Red T, short for Red Transparent. Scroll down, tick Transparency, open up the panel, scroll down and set Alpha to 0.7. The transparency will not show until we change shading to material. Stay in solid for now. Duplicate, Shift D and Enter. Press M and move the duplicate to a new layer. Go into the new layer. Press R to rotate, Z for the Z axis, 90 and Enter. Click the Object Properties button and call the new brick. Brick 90, T for transparent. Duplicate, Shift D and Enter, press M and move the duplicate to the layer below. Go into the layer below and name the new brick, Brick 90. Click the Material button, click the Browse Material button and change the material to the solid red. Duplicate, Shift D and Enter, press M to move the duplicate to a new layer. Go into the new layer Click the Object Properties button and name the new brick, Brick Half. Press S to scale, Y for the Y axis, 0.5 and Enter. Duplicate, Shift D and Enter. Press M to move the duplicate to a new layer. Go into the new layer, name the new brick, Brick Half, T for Transparent. Click the Material button, click the Browse Material button and set the material to the transparent red. I forgot to name one of the bricks. Go into the layer, select the brick, click the Object Properties and name the brick Brick T for Transparent. Go to the first layer, select what was the original cube and rename it Add Brick it will be the insertion point where new bricks are added. Now that all the brick types have been made, I'm going to set up the scene. Set the Z location of the add brick to 0.3 and set shading to material. Add mesh plane, press S to scale 8 and enter. Go into edit mode, scroll down. Click Subdivide and set the number of cuts to 7. Click the Material button, click the New Material button, call the new material Grey. Click the Add New Material Slot button, click the New Material button, click the Diffuse color, set the red to 0 and the blue to 0 and call the new material Green. Change the view to the top view. Go into face select mode and select a face. Press C on the keyboard to go into C select mode and drag out a pattern of faces. How you set up the ground plane is entirely up to you. I'm going to make a simple grid pattern 
leaving these two faces grey to show where the front is. Press escape to get out of C select mode, select green and click assign. Go back into object mode and drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. To set the background colour, click the world button, click the horizon colour and set the red value to 0.2, the green value to 0.3 and the blue value to 0.4. To see the background colour, click the plus to open up the properties panel, scroll down, open up the display panel and tick world background, drag to close the properties panel, select the lamp and press X to delete it, add lamp hemi, Click the Object Properties button and set the Z location of the Hemi to 8. Next, I'm going to set up the camera. Before I do that, I'm going to add an empty, which the camera is always going to look at. Select the camera and set its X rotation to 90 and its Y and Z rotation to 0. Set the X location to 0, the Y location to minus 25, and the Z location to 1, and set the parent of the camera to the empty. Change the view to the camera view and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Drag to make the timeline window bigger, the 3D view window smaller. Change the window type to a logic editor window, drag to close the properties panel and zoom in with the mouse wheel, add a mouse sensor and a motion actuator, set the mouse event to wheel up, set the Z location to minus two, Z instead of Y location because the camera has a rotation of 90 degrees and connect those up. With the mouse pointer in the 3D view window, press P to play the game engine and we can zoom in with the mouse wheel, press escape, close up the logic bricks, add another mouse sensor and another motion actuator, set the mouse event type to wheel down and the Z location to 2 and connect those up. To be able to rotate the view, we're going to use a mouse actuator in look mode. Select the empty, add a mouse sensor and a mouse actuator. Change mouse event to middle button. Turn pulse mode on. Change the mode of the actuator to look. Under use Y axis, set max to one degree and that will only allow you to orbit above the ground plane. Connect those up. Press P to play. Drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Press escape. Next I'm going to set up logic bricks that will move the brick around the scene so that we can add bricks where we want them. Select the brick Add a keyboard sensor and a motion actuator. Click on the key field and press the right arrow. Click tap. This is very important so that the brick moves the exact distance. Set the X location to 0.5 and connect the logic bricks up. I'm going to jump ahead now and do all four arrow keys. The left arrow moves the brick minus 0.5 in the X direction. The up arrow moves the brick forward plus 0.5 in the Y direction. The down arrow moves the brick back minus 0.5 in the Y direction. If the brick moves further than you expect, you've forgotten to click tap. To add new layers of bricks, we need to move the insertion point in the z-axis direction. We've run out of arrow keys, so I'm going to use the letters A and Z from the keyboard. 
we need to add two more keyboard sensors and two more motion actuators. I'm going to jump ahead and do that. Most of the time the arrow keys will be used to move the insertion point. When a new layer is needed, pressing A will move the insertion point up by 0.3 of a blender unit. The bricks are 0.3 thick. You may need to move back down a layer. Pressing Z will move the brick down by 0.3. Connect those up. It's a good idea to give Logic Bricks meaningful names. Press P to play and now we can move the brick in all directions up and down. Next the user chooses the type of brick by pressing 1, 2 or 3. So we need another three keyboard sensors. Click on the key field and press 1 on the keyboard and name the logic brick key 1. The current brick shape is then replaced by the selected brick shape using an edit object actuator in replace mesh mode. Clicking on the mesh field we have a problem. It is a replace mesh actuator not a replace object and the underlying meshes don't have meaningful names. To solve the problem we have to give meaningful names to the underlying meshes of the transparent bricks. Select Brick T, the ordinary brick with the transparent material. Click its object data properties. I'm going to call the ordinary bricks type 1, T1 for short. Select Brick 90T, the bricks rotated to 90 degrees I'm going to call type 2. Select Brick half T, the half bricks I'm going to call type 3. Select the add brick click the mesh field, now we can select type 1 and connect those up. Add a property actuator. We need to store the brick type chosen ready for when we add the brick. Click the plus to open up the properties panel. Click add game property. Call the game property brick type. Change the type to integer whole number and set its initial value to 1. Drag to close the properties panel and scroll down. Select the brick type property and assign the value 1 to it and connect it up. I need to add keyboard sensors and edit object and property actuators for types 2 and 3. I'm going to jump ahead and do that. I've added the bricks so if the user presses 2 the mesh is replaced with type 2 and the brick type property is set to 2. Similarly for 3 with the mesh type and the value. Before testing the system I know there will be problems because the rotation and scale was not applied to the bricks that we made at the beginning. Click the object properties button. In the object menu apply, notice shortcut key is control and A rotation and scale. Go into the layer, select the brick, control and A, apply rotation and scale. Go into the next layer, select, control A, rotation and scale. Repeat for all the bricks, applying the rotation and scale. selecting control A rotation and scale and back to the first layer and select. Next I'm going to set up logic bricks that will add bricks at the insertion point. When the user presses the spacebar a brick is added so we need a keyboard sensor. We need three edit object actuators to add the three brick types and we need three expression controllers that will pass on a pulse if the expression is true. I'm going to jump ahead and set up the first set of logic bricks. 
when the user presses the spacebar and the expression brick type equals one is true, we want to add ordinary bricks, connect those up, I'm going to jump ahead and set up the remaining bricks. When the user presses the spacebar and the brick type is 2, then a brick rotated to 90 degrees is added. If the brick type is 3, then a half brick is added. Before we test the logic bricks, set the material of the add brick to the transparent red. With the mouse pointer in the 3D view window, press P to play, drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view, use the arrow keys and the grid squares to place the bricks, press the space bar to add a brick, press 2 to change the brick type, press 1, press 2, press 3, to go up a layer, press A, but the displacement should have been 0 0.6, not 0 0.3, so I have to press A twice. Press 1 to change the brick type, and off we go again. At any time, we can rotate the view, zoom in with the mouse wheel, press Escape. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the file created in the tutorial for you to download at my website, click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.